Hey everyone, I know I don't usually make this kind of video, but I thought I'd make a reaction video to something I saw online about ancient history. This is in reaction to a YouTube channel, and the videos on here are usually about ancient history, looking for evidence that there were advanced civilizations existing in the past. I just watched a little bit of the beginning of this video, and what I saw of the beginning made me want to do a reaction. So let's look at this together. All right, let's start from the beginning. What I'm about to show you will likely blow your mind, because by the end of this video, you will have seen overwhelming evidence that a mysteriously long-lost ancient human civilization once spanned virtually our entire planet, which is both amazing and exciting when you think about it. Now I'm about to show you more so yeah, if there was a discovery like that, it would totally rewrite the textbooks. People get really excited about the idea of some revolutionary discovery that totally changes everything. And what usually happens when they're looking for that discovery is that they think they found it prematurely. More than 250 amazing photos and comparisons of ancient sites from around the world, which None of them seen by themselves prove a widespread global civilization. It becomes nothing short of actual proof that there really was an ancient global civilization that spanned virtually every continent around the world. And you'll be- Okay, so that's a big claim here. He uses the word proof uh, rather than something like suggestion. Like, do these sites suggest that there could have been a globe spanning civilization? He uses the word proof. So that's a really tall order. With the awkward question, which is, how was I not aware of these details before? Why is nobody in the scientific or academic community talking about this? And okay, so again, usually people interested in this topic uh, believe there's some kind of conspiracy in the academic community against these revolutionary ideas that would disrupt the standard model of history and archeology. span it is true that revolutionary discoveries get a lot of pushback from academics. The evidence needs to be overwhelming and incontrovertible before we start rewriting the textbooks. Information to light. Like, shouldn't this be in the news or something? Let me first preface this video by pointing out that the Roman Empire is considered to have been the largest and most widespread ancient civilization ever known to have existed. I would be interested to know what data he's using to make that claim because I think the Roman Empire is not the biggest, either by land size. I That would be the British Empire. Also not the biggest by population density, which I think would go to the Qing Empire. With the Caesars controlling approximately one in four people on Earth during its height, most everyone surely is familiar with not only the Egyptian pyramids, but the pyramids of Central America as well, along with various pyramids within Southeast Asia. In fact, it is considered to be, and I quote, fringe science, pseudo-history, and pseudo-archaeology. There are many good reasons for that. Uh, for example, Eric von Daniken is essentially a charlatan, uh, and he made his career out of tricking people. That it was possible for these ancient civilizations to have been connected across the oceans and the continents. But let's take a second to compare the unique similarities between the Steppe Pyramids of Egypt, the Steppe Pyramids of Central America, and the Steppe Pyramids of Southeast Asia. So it seems that he's about to make an argument that the uh, large abundance of Steppe Pyramids across the Earth is evidence of an advanced civilization that we haven't discovered in uh, the early antiquity. But uh, I think for reasons that I'll explain after he makes that argument that it's definitely not evidence for anything. Archaeologists will tell you that the similarity is simply related to the primitive structural design of the pyramids themselves. I disagree. However, these pyramid similarities are not a main supporting argument for this video. Okay, well that's good that he, is, that he has other evidence uh, because this is definitely not proof of anything. Uh, it's natural that many civilizations would have settled on a pyramid because the triangle is basically the strongest shape that you can engineer. And buildings that follow engineering rules will tend to be in similar shapes because that's the way engineering works. You wouldn't build 
for example, an upside down pyramid because it would fall down. Maybe people tried it and that's why we don't have them anymore because they fell down. So the structures that we have today exist because they follow engineering rules that work. And it's likely that civilizations, when they discovered those engineering rules that make buildings which don't fall down, they kept those structures because they proved to be strong across time. And that's why we have those structures today. It's because they're strong. Not because this was a stylistic choice independently settled upon by different civilizations. If there was something truly outrageous uh, that they had to go out of their way to construct in that particular shape across different civilizations, that would be an interesting piece of evidence to consider. But rather a start point. But I have to say that I do not think that these similarities are just a coincidence, especially when you consider them from a side-by-side -side comparison. Look and- So like I said before, uh, they follow engineering rules, so they don't fall down, and they would be likely to continue making things that don't fall down. Uh, so it is probably a coincidence. It's natural that you would build something wider at the base and then narrower at the top. It saves resources, and it's incredibly firm. Yourself. Here's what I would argue. That although in today's world we are separated by oceans and continents, we are still a global civilization that is absolutely connected. In any major city, you will find skyscrapers. And although they're all different from each other, they're still the same exact structural concept. Right, they're the same structural concept because they follow engineering rules, which can be discovered through the intellect by anybody who is experimenting with engineering. Made of steel, concrete, and glass. Different in architecture, yes, but essentially the same nonetheless. Look at this here. And although much smaller compared to other pyramids around the world, is undoubtedly very old and yet very sophisticated, made up of polygonal stones that fit together like a tight-fitted puzzle, requiring no mortar or concrete to hold them together, simply a makeup of intelligent mathematics and precision. And it's clear- Is this a pyramid? It looks like a citadel from an early Mycenaean uh, city, probably in the Peloponnese. Uh, is it a pyramid? Let me find out. Okay, so it looks like it maybe was a small pyramid. Um, what's different about this one compared to the other ones is that it's hollow. Uh, most pyramids, like, for example, the Pyramid of Giza, there are some chambers inside, but it's not just like a wall like this. This is essentially walls that angle in into a pyramid shape. I don't really see how it's evidence of anything. Can he really argue that it's evidence of a globe spanning civilization in antiquity that was teaching people to make pyramids? As you won't find this structure design in and around Athens where all the other notable ancient Greek ruins are found and visited. Just like the little known stone walls in certain places in Greece, there are also a few examples in Italy as well. Again, something most people do not realize, as you won't find an abundance of this type of ancient stone structure in and around Rome either. Uh, so polygonal masonry is typically regarded to be more earthquake resistant because when there's a, a big jolt happening, uh, they can lock together and so they don't fall down. It's likely that this was probably the impetus for them having polygonal masonry. It's also worth mentioning that there are incredible and massive polygonal stone walls in various places in Turkey as well. It raises questions because, as far as we were taught, there can be no possible connection between the ancient cultures of South America and Egypt, or to that of Greece and Italy. I'm not really sure what he means by that. Uh, did he say that there are academics who deny that there was any cross-cultural connection between Greece and Italy? Or to that of Greece and Italy because there was definitely connection between Greece and Italy. Uh, classical Greece had uh, colonies in Italy, for example, in Sicily. And even before classical Greece, there were people as far away as Anatolia going to live in Italy, for example, Pythagoras. That whole area, the whole Mediterranean and Mesopotamian area, definitely 
or connected. However, what I'm about to show you next may take you by surprise, as there are several examples of incredible ancient polygonal stone walls all the way over in the island country of Japan. Leave a comment if you are completely unaware of these walls, and like I said, there are a variety of different examples of them, and I'm only showing you a few here in this video. So, he sees a similarity in walls across different countries, uh, and this similarity has an engineering attribute of being more durable. So, he doesn't think that maybe that the Japanese people discovered this uh, in a country with a lot of earthquakes. He just thinks that maybe they all learned it from the same person. But compared to the stone walls of South America, which, although is not exactly the same, they will remind you of my skyscraper analogy I gave moments ago. Is this really just a coincidence, or a simple matter of organic human ingenuity within different civilizations that are worlds apart? Well, if that's... So if different countries discovered, like, mathematics, I don't think that we would need to say uh, a country existing before them that we don't know about probably taught it to them. Because, well, then how did that country learn mathematics, right? Did, was it taught by another country before it? And then what about that country? These kinds of things, as I stated earlier, are discoverable through the intellect. And if they have a practical function of being more resistant to earthquakes or something like that, then it's probably that different cultures are going to find a way to make use of that. That's what you think. Wait until what you see next. This is a stone box sarcophagus found in ancient Japan. Now, compare it to a notable stone sarcophagus that made headlines around the world in 2018 upon its discovery. Look at the design of the stone lid, and now compare to the stone lid found in Japan. However, now compare the Japanese stone lid to others that are found in ancient Egypt. Look at this and think for yourself. I do not see a coincidence here. I see a connection. Okay, so he is using what looks like coincidences as evidence, um, rather than wondering if there's some kind of practical value for doing it this way instead of another way that makes it easier. What is this? What is this um, sarcophagus? Where did he say it was? When he says ancient Japan, I really wonder what time period he's meaning. Because ancient Japan means something very different from ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt is like 3000 BC to 500 BC. Uh, ancient Japan is like 500 AD to like 1000 AD. And they definitely had a lot of contact with China during that time, from whom they learned how to write. I'm wondering if there was an ancient civilization that was spit that was spanning the globe and teaching these engineering techniques, why did they get to Japan so much later? And why did they not teach Japan how to write a lot sooner? Why did Japan only learn how to write like three or four thousand years later? Easter Island, which is more than two thousand miles from the nearest point of South America. Of course, you know, when we think of Easter Island, the notable Moai statues are probably the first thing to come to mind. However, what most of you are likely to find even more surprising is to learn that there is an example of a polygonal stone wall on this island. Could it be evidence that they learned it from one source? I really don't think so. I don't think it's evidence. I myself did not know this existed until creating this video, as it's the Moai statues that get all the attention. Now, compare this wall to a wall all the way over in Peru. Look at these comparisons and tell me that this isn't a total match. Uh, they do look pretty similar. Obviously, Easter Island is on a very small island in the middle of the ocean, and an, an estimates of their arrival there are between like 300 to 1000 CE. 
they obviously came from somewhere. They didn't swim across. They weren't just born there. And some academics do speculate that they came from South America. It is also widely accepted that the people of Easter Island came from the Polynesian Islands to the west and settled on Easter Island. I do not disagree with that at all. However, let me quickly remind you of something before I show you something else, which is that transoceanic sea travel during this time frame was considered to be impossible and again to Polynesian settlers did have very good sea navigation abilities. The little known cloud people statues of Peru. Tell me this isn't unbelievably similar. And again, but that's not all. Compare these statues to others as far away as Turkey and get this, Indonesia. Okay, so this statue from Turkey looks like it's from the Gobekli Tepe site. Yep, so this statue is from Gobekli Tepe. Although not exactly the same, when you look at the more nuanced details such as hand positions and unique facial and jaw structure, I mean, come on, is this also just a coincidence? So people who constantly make appeals to coincidence, is this just a coincidence? That's an argument that people often make when they're trying to argue for the existence of God, something that they don't have any evidence for. When they don't have evidence for something, they point at similarities and ask you, is there a coincidence? is the world's oldest megalithic site on Earth, dating back closer to 12,000 years, and was buried up until excavations began in just the 1990s. Right, so it's not a contemporary with the other civilizations you are comparing it to, which places would have been totally uninhabited. There wouldn't have been anybody there yet to teach if they were taught by some globe-spanning civilization. Something you'll find at this same site is the specific stone carving of someone holding a handbag. This is a very unique and specific connection that you will also find all the way back in Mesoamerica among the Olmec culture. So this is an idea uh, from Bram Hancock in his book about a lost civilization that could potentially exist. This is so unbelievably similar and to think that the bags themselves, the stone carving, dates back 6,000 years earlier from our first known documented civilization, which is the Sumerians, which they themselves have depictions holding this bag, and they are 6,000 years older than we are from present day right now. Incredible. How can something so unique be just a coincidence? Once again, an appeal to coincidences. Most people walking around society have never even heard of this before. The authorities in the academic world shun it, yet they never even shared it with you so you could think for yourself. That they share another similarity to that of ancient Greeks and Hindu gods of ancient India, which is the depiction of the trident. But does this prove a connection? Well, by itself, no. But that is not the only similarity shared between these three separate cultures. But there is other evidence of a connection between these three cultures because they are all a potentially descendants of an Indo-European migration or invasion that took place around 3000 or 2000 BC, somewhere like that, that we're not sure about. And that definitely took place because we can see it in linguistic similarities between uh, languages across these countries, as far as India to the Middle East uh, and to as far west as England. And those people, those Indo-Europeans who came down and filled up the Greek and Mesopotamian area, they brought their gods with them and they mixed their gods with whoever they came into contact with. So there is a reason for a similarity. For example, the caduceus is the symbol showing two snakes intertwined and found throughout the modern world today among the medical and healthcare industries. Right, uh, this was a hermetic symbol from the god Hermes. What most people do not know is it has been found dating back as far as the ancient Sumerians of 6,000 years ago, like I just mentioned. Right, uh, there's probably a connection uh, between these places. Sumeria is not far from Greece and it's not far from Egypt and the hermetic cult probably originated in uh, 
Egypt, maybe the Middle East, nobody really knows. Uh, there's evidence for a connection here. Well, you may find it interesting to learn that this symbol was also utilized by the ancient Greeks, as well as in ancient India. Again, another interesting and specific coincidence for three separate cultures. It's not just a coincidence. Uh, they have a close proximity and they're all flourishing in uh, the ancient world, not too long before or after each other. They're not too far away from each other. And there's a linguistic connection between them. And there's a religious connection between them. Uh, there's probably a long history that's not written down, an unwritten history of mystery cults, like the Hermetic cult that we know existed, along with the Orphic cult. I'm not going to watch anymore. Uh, if you would like me to keep watching the rest of the video, I will. I've never done a video like this before, so it's kind of an experiment. And you can let me know if you liked it.